Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is my February plans and fabric haul. Technically it's not really a haul, I've shopped my stash. I want to be doing that a lot more this year. My stash is enormous, it's gorgeous. I picked all those fabrics out. I need to make them up. Giant pile of fabrics right next to me. The other thing that I'm going to be doing in February is I'm going to be trying to work my way through my knit fabric stash. This is the time of year that I like wearing scuba dresses and cozy jumpers and things like that and I have so many beautiful fabrics that have been sitting there for a long time and deserve to be made up. Whilst I have a giant pile of fabric and lots and lots of plans, the majority of them are for knit fabrics and they tend to be a lot quicker projects. So I'm hoping that I'm not being overly ambitious. But again, this is me we're talking about, so uh, I'm being overly ambitious. I do have a woven fabric to show you. This was up for a vote on Patreon. Now, I knew that I wanted to make this Vogue pattern, and I cannot remember the number of this Vogue pattern, but I am going to be making the maxi length shirt dress with the full sleeves, but I'm going to either be cuffing or putting an elastic gathering at the bottom of the full sleeves, because as beautiful as those really full sleeves are, I know that I would find them incredibly annoying to actually wear. It's going to be the maxi dress of dreams. Now, I saw this fabric on the textile center. It was, I think, four pounds a meter. I know Rachel's got some of this as well. She got it from Wal Walton's and she just put it in her fabric haul from Walton's and I was like, oh, I recognize that. It's gorgeous. It's a viscose crepe, so it does have like a crepey texture to it. And they, the textile center called it peachy florals, which, think is pretty accurate. I am, it's on a black background and I'm really excited about making this shirt dress because whilst I will wear it as a maxi shirt dress I have also seen people style this type of dress with it buttoned up to the waist and then open from there with a belt and jeans on underneath. Now I do have high-waisted jeans but it might get a little bulky around the waist area so I'm thinking I might make myself some high-waisted jeggings because you know all the jeans part is going to be completely covered so tight skinny jeans underneath with knee-high boots and this as a kind of a cover-up. I really like that look. I've seen it on Pinterest a lot and have pinned it to my curated closet board a lot. This is going to be this month's sew along and I'm really excited about it and as I say I knew which pattern I wanted to make so the vote was for fabrics and the Patreon peeps picked peachy florals which I'm very happy about so it's going to be the Vogue shirt dress maxi version. I'm excited. Have I said that enough? <laughs> the rest of the fabrics I have next to me are all knits and when I say the rest oh, I have a lot. So I kind of was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I've got two drawers of knit fabrics in my, one of my wardrobes, not my fabric wardrobe, it's supposed to be my clothing wardrobe. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna clean those out, it's gonna be fine. And then I looked and there's actually quite a lot more in there than I thought there was. I also have two Joann's bags full of knit fabric down in the main house, which are all kind of either off cuts from projects that I have enough to make some kind of a top with, or they are shorter legs that I purposefully bought to make things like the Seamworker Story or something like that. Ideally, I'd like to make my, make my way through those as well, but I don't think that's, you know, I know knit projects are quick, but I still, there's, there's, a, there's a limit. <laughs> I've pulled out the ones from my wardrobe drawers up here because I would like to have some room to put the things that I make in once I've made them. So uh, yeah, let's, let's show you these. So this first one is, I think, Quite a lot of these are from the textile center this first one is from the textile center it's a i don't know it's polyester but it's ha it's it's kind of like rainbow and then it's got kind of gold flecks in it i will do close-ups of all the fabrics for you so you can see them a bit closer i think i have three meters of this because that is tends to be my go-to length when buying knit fabrics is three meters i have enough to do a couple of things with this i'm thinking the first one is going to be the mashup between the Kamatia boxy hoodie and the Astoria jumper that I've made. So it's kind of fitted at the waist, then it's back wing to about here, and then it has super long cuffs, and I like putting a roll neck on it because I really like that neck finish, although you could very easily put a neck band on that and make a separate roll neck as I have, or like cowl scarf to look like a roll neck, as I have done in the past. It's really, really pretty. It's rainbow, it's bright, it's, it's sparkly. When I saw it on the textile center, I was like, yes, I need that. If any of these fabrics are still available, I will list them down below, but I know I've had this one for a good couple 
couple of years now so I doubt they have any more of it I'm sorry peachy florals they do have some more of it though so I will link that one next is another fabric from the textile center and again I have three meters of this this is so soft when I buy knit fabrics from the textile center sometimes it's a little bit hit and miss as to how soft they are but this one is really really soft it's beautiful it has this kind of floral pattern on it look with dark red flowers and I just I absolutely love it and again I have three meters of this I'm going to make the same Kamatia Astoria mashup because I really think I'll wear that a lot and then with whatever I have left I will have to have a have a look see as to how much there is left and what I want to make with it I'm thinking because this is actually quite thin something like the wanted tea uh, with the square neckline could be quite fun and actually doable in this because the stretch is good the recovery is good and it's as I say it's quite a thin knit so I think I might get away with that but I'm not sure but I, I like the idea of that I have three meters of this and I am very excited to have finally sewn it up next we have some super expensive fabric this is the sparkle fabric by Atelier Brunette the French I think it's a French terry it's really really lovely and soft. I have made a Seamwork Astoria out of the grey and pink version of this but this is obviously black and gold. I bought, I think, I got this from Guthrie and Garni at the Knitting and Stitching show at least two years ago and I bought it to make this butterick pattern and I thankfully, because this stuff, this, this is like £22 a metre, I thankfully I decided to make a muslin up with the butterick dress and I absolutely hated it on me. I do really, I, I ended up cropping it and I really liked how it looked cropped with a nice thick waistband on it so I think I might go back and tweak the pattern because there was still seams here where the, the pockets that went to have gone in that don't need to be there if I have it cropped but I really like the neckline and the yoke on the back I may do that with this I have 1.8 meters of this so I want to be sensible about what I try and do with it I might be able to get two things out of this as well I love my Seamwork Astoria in the grey and pink version so Possibly I might make that. I could make the Kamatias Astoria mashup with this, which I think would look really, really cool. I could do that with outputting a roll neck on this one. I could put a normal neck band on it, and then I could make myself another snood like I did with the grey. So there's quite a few options for this one. And the only reason I've not made it up as yet is because it is so expensive and I'm not sure what to do with it given the amount that I have. I, like I said, I think I bought 1.8 meters, which is what the butterick pattern required. That kind of dress is just not for me so yeah this one I want to get it made up and start wearing it because it's stunning it's so soft and it was expensive so it deserves to be a garment or two hopefully this next one was also expensive this is an Albstoff oh, I don't know exactly what it is it's a knitted fabric it's kind of purpley and it has gold flecks in it and I also have the cuffing that goes with this unfortunately that is down in the main house I think I've got 1.5 meters of this and I bought this because Oh, now I'm not going to remember her name. So the beautiful redhead from Selkie Patterns. Oh, what's her name? I'm going to put it on screen because that's going to really bug me. But she did a haul where she had bought some of this type of fabric from Albstoff and the cuffing. And I was like, okay, yes, I, you have influenced me. I shall buy it. I have, I have some of this. Now, I want to make the sew over it Anderson blouse, but with a f uh, fitted waist and fitted cuffs. And as I say, I have the cuffing that exactly matches this, so I hope I have enough because I think I bought 90 centimeters. I think I bought, I bought, I bought whatever packet they they gave me. So I'm hoping that I have enough to do the cuffs and the waistband. Yeah, I fully intend this because it, this is not soft. It's very, very pretty, but it's not super, super soft like the Atelier Brunette stuff. So I fully intend this to be something that I wear over, say, for example, the now the named Paola t-shirt and I have the pattern for that and as you also know me talking about this, the knit fabrics I have I also have two of these cubes full of viscose jersey from minerva.com to make up into t-shirts and I have I think I have something like 27 colors and enough to make two t-shirts out of each color some of them a little bit more because I like the color so much so uh, yes but I'm yeah I think wearing like a t-shirt with the Anderson over the top because I yeah I, I kind of like how it drapes I think it's gonna look really cool I think it's gonna look really cool that's what this is what this was always intended to be so I would like to get it made up I've already I've already traced the pattern I have 
altered the pattern. I've I, I nearly finished a woven version of it because that's the nice thing. I think the alteration that I want to make will work for both knits and for woven fabrics. I stupidly cut a hole in the sleeve when I was trimming the French sleeve that when I was trimming the French seam that I was trying to do the sleeve with. So that one kind of went in the bin, but. I, well, it went in the I don't like you anymore pile and has ended up in scraps. So I had a too much on the side of caution and I had rather, I hadn't cropped it enough. I'd left an inch too long and it was just that little bit too baggy. That might work for the knit ones given how I want them to be worn over things. I, it might work, but I, yeah, I'm not, I, I have done most of the work on that pattern. I just need to do a little bit, a few more tweaks. And next up, is some gorgeous little cat jersey that I was given, now I think this was from Lamazzi Fabrics, I'd ordered some other fabrics from them and they had included a meter of this as a thank you into the order and it's just so pretty. It's not it's not the kind of print that I would naturally gravitate, gravitate towards but I do really like it. So what I'm thinking is I am going to get the Jennifer Lauren Gable Tee and I'm going to use this as wearable muslin fodder for that pattern. I really like that pattern, I have read a few reviews that say size down because it does come up quite big and the way I prefer my t-shirts to fit is is for them to be fitted for there to be like negative ease or my exact measurements so that they are clinging to me that's that's just my preference but I thought that this would be a really cool fabric to try the Jennifer Lauren Gable tee in because I really really like it I really think it's going to look nice but it's one of those ones where I'm not overly precious about it because I didn't pick it myself but it was a very kind gift so I think it's it's something I, I think it's going to work I think it's going to look really cool so yes there's this kitty fabric next up we have sharks sharks on grey knit this thing is the softest thing you have ever felt in your life oh my goodness I got this from magpie uh, material magpie laura boz i got it from boz and i just i love this i love this so much i have a meter and a half of it because this is soft because I, I had in my head that i was going to do the uh, so over anderson in this with some cool cuffing but because this is so soft i'm kind of leaning towards maybe doing a seamwork astoria if it's got enough stretch does it have enough stretch Oh no, that was why I was doing the sew over Anderson because it doesn't have loads and loads of stretch. I needed something that wasn't, didn't need to be super, super stretchy, but I also wanted to kind of have it fit my aesthetic. So yeah, I'm thinking, I, I don't know why I fell for these sharks, but I really did. But yeah, I think the sew over Anderson blouse was some cool cuffing and I have quite a lot of cool cuffing because the lovely Alex from Gingerhead & Co is very generous and has uh, sent me a whole bunch of it. So I'm thinking, that's what that's going to be and it's going to be awesome and for this one I could wear like vests underneath it because again as I say the inside of this is so so soft you guys need to be touch touch vision needs to be a thing although I think that could definitely get misused let's leave that one there shall we next up I have this amazing amazing uh, just it's so soft this beautiful beautiful fabric it's from girl charlie the UK store the lovely Mark came down and was a vendor at the So Southampton meetup that we did in July last year. I was so sad when I got the email and saw on social media that Girl Charlie UK has decided to close. I really enjoyed their fabrics. Mark is a lovely, lovely person. The, the, every time I've met him, he's just like, hello, and he remembered me, and he was just really, really, really sweet. And they helped me out so much. So the very first time I worked with Knit Fabrics and got my overlocker out, they gifted me the fabric that I used to, to, to do that video. They, other, other sew-alongs that I have done, they have been very, very generous and either discounted or gifted me the fabric uh, for the, the sew-alongs that I have used. So yeah, I was really sad to see that they are closing. This was a really kind gift from Mark for saying thank you for inviting them to Sew Southampton. And it's beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. I have a meter of it. So I'm kind of hoping I can get a Renfrew t-shirt out of this, a long sleeved Renfrew t-shirt. Although I don't think I'll be able to get the roll neck really big neckline as well as long sleeves out of this one so I might go for something I might actually go for something like the Astoria because it is just so so st soft and the Astoria is the way that I've made it and, and traced it for me is kind of more of a t-shirt it's a jumper so possibly that one because I really like that that look this is going to get oh this could be 
a gable t-shirt if the if the kitties work this could be that so i have lots of options for this and I, it's just beautiful and it, again it's so so soft so soft i love that and it's got leaves on it next up this is another one that i got from guthrie and garni at the show a couple of years ago it looks fairly boring and plain here but it's fluffy oh Yes, so mum bought some of this and the outside of mum, she, mum bought it in cream. The outside of mum's was flecked and looked really pretty on the outside. Not that this is not a really pretty colour, but it's just, it's plain on the outside. Well, well, what I think is supposed to be the outside. But the, the yeah, it's, it's fluffy. So I kind of, I don't know what I want to do with this because I don't want this to be the outside, the fluffy side. I want this to be the inside, but I don't, I, I don't know. So I was thinking that this might be really cool to use as a lining for like a zip up cardigan a bomber jacket kind of thing i have the beautiful fabric that the lovely alex sent me that i have made a top out of i have enough of that left to use that as the outside and then have this as the lining and i think that would be really really cool but both of those fabrics are fairly precious to me because i can't get any more of this and and the other one was a gift so I think I need to find something in my stash that I can use as a trial run because I want to make sure that I like the garment look before I use precious fabrics for that. But that I would like to get used and made up and it's just so lovely. So, so lovely. At the same show, I went to Higgs and Higgs. I told you that was a lot of fabrics and, and I bought this cable knitted fabric and this I think I got a metre and a meter 25 of and it's it's nice and soft this is going to either be the toaster sweater the McCall sweater I've made recently or a seamwork Astoria if there is enough stretch in it probably not so yeah I think probably the toaster sweater or the the McCall's sweater because I just it's gorgeous it's really really lovely I'm going to finally get to wear it which is going to be good because it's been in my sash for ages my battery is flashing two secs Hopefully I haven't changed the frame too much there. The final fabric, the last one I have to show you, is this kind of waffle texture fabric that I got from the textile center ages ago. This one is soft, but it's not like the softest thing you've ever felt in your life. And it has stretch one way and yeah, it's not the stretchiest of things either. So this needs to kind of be something like the toaster sweater something that doesn't need too much stretch it definitely couldn't be in a story because there's no way i'd get it on and off um, but yeah something like the toaster sweater and again i just really like the texture of it and i do like the navy color and um, aren't you proud of me that there's some solid colors in this one <laughs> that's the last fabric as i mentioned i have two drawers in my wardrobe still fairly full of fabric lit fabric i have two bags in the main house fairly full of fabric and i also have two of these cubby holes fairly full of knit fabric so whilst i don't think i'm going to get my entire knit fabric stash sewn up this month i'm going to do a damn good job of attempting to get some of it sewn up and i'm quite excited about these as you will have noticed a lot of these are also tops which is something that i definitely need in my stash so or in my wardrobe out of my stash and into my wardrobes i i'm excited i have some beautiful patterns to try i've got some of the schnitzchen patterns that dilik sent me for my kb pattern swap christmas present not last year but the year before i have some named patterns that i'd like to give a go i've got some commercial patterns or the big four patterns that i'd like to try so i have lots and lots of options i think as i say i'm probably going to err on the side of making things that i have made before that i know fit me because they will be quick makes they're already traced and i know that i like them but i do want to branch out and try some different things like the gable t-shirt and a bomber jacket and those kind of things so hopefully there's a decent amount of variety in there as well as the sew along for the vogue shirt dress speaking of sew alongs i know i have about five outstanding they are all for cotton dresses so they've kind of got put on the back burner whilst the weather has been a bit miserable but i will be getting to those over the next couple of months in time for the spring summer and when the weather cheers up a little bit on patreon there is always a vote for what you guys would like to see me so next month as a sew along and this month i am kind of a little bit stumped clearly left on my own devices i will pick more dresses to make and i need some variety in my wardrobe so i have asked you guys who are patreon peeps and in fact i don't think you even have to have pledged there's a there's a 
the, the post is up available for everybody to read and comment on so yeah what would you like to see me put up for the vote on patreon as next month's sew along nancy's already suggested the beach pajamas i have done a sew along for those already which is a good sew along and the only thing that i would admit from those from that sew along when i make my next ones is lengthening the torso i didn't need to do that i just needed to lengthen the crotch depth so i don't think making another sew along for that is really a viable option but I do like where you're going because it was like you need something make it yes so what would you guys like to see a sew along for don't say coats I am no coat making expert I am learning that maybe next year maybe or maybe later this year I would feel up to doing a sew along for a coat I know a lot of you guys have been asking for the new vintage Vogue 1669 I think it is pattern you've been asking for a sew along for that possibly Possibly. I want to make one first and see how I get along with it because it is an advanced pattern and there are some techniques in there that are like, hey? So yeah, don't say coats. But other than that, what would you guys like to see as a sew along next month? And world's your oyster other than coats. Let me know in the comment section on the Patreon post and I will put a link to, Patreon is always linked in my description box, but I will put a link to that particular post in the description box as well because I would be very interested to see what you guys would like to see more of. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Bye!